My name is Kate Schulner. I've been playing the instrument for 20 years, and I'm a professional performer and teacher of the viola da gamba. It is a huge passion of mine to share it, um, both through my teaching and my performing, and also making these videos. I've decided to create a longer version of my YouTube short, the top five characteristics of the viola da gamba, and I've also decided to make this a comparison video between the viola da gamba family and the violin family. I'll be using the bass viola da gamba in comparison to the cello, um, even though there are more members of each family. Most of the things that I'm relating um, in this video, though, can relate to both the violin and the viola, and also the treble viola da gamba and the tenor viola da gamba. Let's get started on the top five characteristics of the viola da gamba in comparison to the violin family. The first point that I made was that the viola da gamba has a flat back, so let's take a look at that. Here's the viola da gamba back. It is indeed flat. You've got a little curvature here up at the top, but for the most part, it's pretty flat in the back. In comparison, we have the cello, which has very much a rounded back. You can see that there. Got a rounded back. The second and the third points I want to combine today, which are that the viola da gamba has seven frets and six strings, although there are some bass vials that have seven strings, but I'm not going to get into that today. I've come across a lot of people who believe that the frets on the viola da gamba are somehow cheating through performances and things. I've gotten comments from people saying that, um, well, if they could put frets on their instrument and cheat, then they would be in tune most of the time too. So I just want to say right now that the frets are more like guidelines. We actually have to tune our frets. We tie them on and so we can move them to change temperaments to fit in with an organ or a harpsichord or a theorbo player or you know all these different instruments they help us to play chords in tune um, they really help to guide us along uh, the chord structure because as you can imagine doing six uh, note chords super super accurately without any guidance at all would be very 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 difficult the other thing is that when you're playing your fret um, you have to be very precise on it, and it does affect the um, sound production of the instrument. So it does change the sound whether or not you're on the fret. Um, so we do have to be very precise with that. Um, and it does create a kind of a different sound than maybe even a Baroque cello would. If you've looked at my Daphne video, if you've looked at my Tobias Hume video, um, you've probably noticed that I play a lot of chords and the instrument can be a very soloistic instrument, but it can also be a chordal instrument. And having all of those different strings really help us to create deeper textures um, and timbres within our instrument. To me, that's why we have, you know, our six strings and our seven frets. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm not sure if you can see here, but let me see if we can come on. Here they are. Here are our frets, seven of them, six strings. The violin family has four strings and no frets. Let me show you what that looks like. No frets and four strings. Another big difference between the two families are their bows. This is the cello bow. With all of the violin family um, bows, we try to touch the hair as little as possible. So you can see my fingertip is just barely touching the hair right there, but all my other fingers are off of it. And we hold it overhand. Here is the viola da gamba bow. We hold this bow underhand, which means that we very much touch the hair. Um, it's a different sort of bow, um, and the way we hold it is very different. But all the da Gamba players will hold it in a similar bow hold to what I'm doing right now. So that is the Viola da Gamba bow. The other thing about the Viola da Gamba bow and the cello bow is their tips and the kind of the way they sh their shape are very different. Let me show you in comparison. So here we have, down here is the cello bow. Up 
here is the Ville de Gambo. You can see that their tips are really different. And even just kind of the general shape is different. The last characteristic we have is um, how we hold the instruments. So the viola de gamba has no end pin. You hold it with your feet and your legs only. No end pin. And I just put it right between my legs and I hold it. That's the very basis of holding the viola de gamba. Now with the cello, we have an end pin. Let me show you what that looks like. What that also means is that we hold the cello out from our bodies. Um, it's not nestled in the legs like the viola de gamba. There you have it, the top five characteristics of the viola de gamba family in comparison to the violin family. If you enjoyed this, you might want to check out my other videos and hit that subscribe button. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you back here soon.